going on in this. Now, go back to my transparency tool in the interactive toolbar, left click on this circle over here in the corner. I can rotate this, change the size of it. As you can see there, I can make it a very big texture effect like that and have all that going on in there. And you can see how these effects are exactly what we're seeing on the shelves. And in a lot of your high-end affliction and all of this other stuff that's going on, but it's very easy to make in Corel Draw once you understand how to do it. I'll left click on this and resize again, spin it around, change it this way. Entirely different look. Now, complete control over what's going on with this through these interactive tools and textures in Corel Draw. I've got scraped here. If I want to look with something a little bit more grungy, something a little bit more crazy, maybe I want some flames in there. Apply as transparency. And I've actually got some flames in there in the background. So I'm opening up an entirely new avenue of being able to design effectively, as you can see there. Very easy in draw, and we'll convert this back to a monochrome. So we'll go ahead and figure out what texture we want to work with, and we'll wrap this up. But I just want to get into, you know, you can just do all this stuff, boom, 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 and change your textures and effects on the fly very easily. So we'll actually go with, let's go with uh, straight cracks here. We'll apply that as a transparency. Let's go with a nice cracked effect here in our background here. And I'll go ahead and take this. We'll left click here. And now it'll look like we've got cracked paint with some hand-drawn artwork over the top of it. And I'll come up here to my starting and end points. We'll change those. And I just want some cracks in here, as you can see there. And actually bring these down in size. Get a little bit more crack action going on in here, as you can see there. So we've got a nice cracked effect going on here in this design. And it's all still legible. You can still read Wildcats and Soccer in here. So what I've got done down here now with this texture plan, I'm going to go to bitmaps. I'm going to go to mode. Actually, I'm going to go to convert to bitmap. Convert to bitmap, 300 dpi, grayscale, transparent background, select OK, and let that process. Now when that's done, I've actually got to go to, now because I want to take this back to a monochrome, but I want to hold my transparency. But to get my white from my monochrome, I'm going to have to invert this back to a black so that my white is actually black, then convert to a monochrome, then right click to apply my white in monochrome. So I'll go to Effects, Transform, Invert, and that's going to turn that black. But I'm still going to have my transparent background. Now I'm going to go to Bitmaps. Now I'm going to go to Bitmaps, Mode, and I'm going to go to Black and White. And you can see this is all blacked out, so I know I'm going to hold my mask and select OK. Now I'm going to go Go ahead and minimize my fashion factor. I'm done with this. I'm going to left click to knock out my background. Then I'm going to right click on white to bring in my foreground color. Now this is a monochrome bitmap. So I've got all my effects built in here. Now let's go ahead and compare this with the other design that we were working with. And I'll go ahead and delete that background and we'll take this. And all I'm going to do is copy this. Now it's a big file. It'll take just a second to copy. But I could walk into my client once I've got how to do these effects dialed in, we'll go back here, and I've got this, they just want this as a black and white vector. I can come in with this, and I can say, you know, the school color is, say, say it's gold, gold is the, let's say the school color is golden. It's a gold color. Come down here, and I'll create a deep yellow comp, and I'll go in here and grab a different red for my shading there, and then I'll paste this in, and I'll go ahead and resize this on my t-shirt here, and I'll go ahead and walk into the client with a nice color shirt with some effects going on and say, well, here's your vector shirt, you know, and we can set this up for you. It's no problem. But, hey, check out, you know, I just put this together just so you can see what it looked like. And now you've got this off-the-wall fashion artistic design with all these effects going on. You only did it once you know how to do this. And working with your tools and stuff and draw, you've done it in five minutes. And then you go into the client and you say, hey, you know, here's the, what you wanted. And if they, they say they want the vector, fine, because you're giving them the option. You're not saying, hey, do you want this? No, hey. Here's some options for you. This is going to cost a little bit more, but obviously you can see that it looks much more artistic and it's much nicer on the garment. And I guarantee you that between five and seven times out of ten, your clients will upsell and spend more money for this art and you spent five minutes doing it. Now, if it's a 150 shirt order at another two bucks a pop, that's $300 that you're going to put in your pocket for spending an extra five minutes going ahead and setting up these effects. And they look very nice compared to just what's a standard vector as you have here. So you can see by understanding how to work with these types of effects that most of everybody go, says you got to go to Photoshop for very easily and draw once you understand how to do it, you can set these designs up in minutes. Now, once, once I go ahead and set this up, we'll take a look and see what this is going to look like at halftones and talk about how we print this out. 
And I've got this set up. I believe this was all set up here. Uh, I'm going to back up here and make sure this is the actual final design. It is Boy, it even looks nice on that green, doesn't it? Take a look at that. Nice effects going on. Nice hand-drawn art. Very loose in here, etc. So what we'll do is we'll, take a, we'll go ahead and convert this to halftones and see how we print our separations, just so we can see how it actually looks as halftones on a T-shirt. Now this is all set up here. I know this is going to be fine. I want to convert to halftones. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my simple seps. First thing I'm going to do is take a look at my color management and see what colors I've got here. Show color names. I've got black and white CMYK. I want to convert that one click. That's done. Now I've got all Pantone colors in here. I'm going to go to my separations. We're going to go to 55 LPI. And actually what I'll do on this one, I don't think I'm going to need to uh, choke my base. You probably just want to hit that twice because of the effect. You know, just hit that white twice or hit it once. If you want a really faded look or kind of blend into your garment, you could hit it just once actually and then come in with your black. So I'm not going to generate a white base at this point. I'm going to make my DPI for the resolution of my halftones and draw at 800. And we'll go ahead and click on Generate Separations. And we'll let Simple Steps process our art. And then we'll take a look at what we're getting with our halftones. We'll see if this will be a very easy garment. So go ahead and print out your films, burn your screens, and print your t-shirts. And actually, I made a mistake there. I did not select my raster conversion to halftones. So I'll go ahead and click Undo. And we'll go back here, and now I'll set my raster conversions to halftones. I'm back here, and I want to set this to halftones, not grayscale, halftones. We have that set for grayscale, so if you want to 